Chapter 5 Praise be the data stream, O miracle, connector of the twelve thousand worlds, O bottomless fountain of knowledge. Praise, for I may speak to any acquaintance in a few quick taps. Lo, any product, any need or luxury delivered to my location, purse willing. Behold, a recording of a cat bat. It licks its wings in an adorable manner. There are nineteen million similar recordings if this one does not suffice. Behold, I shall not look away. From Liturgy of the Data Stream, version 9.6.1135. One particular morning, in the otherwise undifferentiated haze of mornings, Ninian was repairing an ordinary patch of stonework in the dining room wall and reviewing, out loud, the various types of space folding. There's parallel folding, in which the same folding pattern is used on both sides of the portal at the same time, and then there's symmetrical folding, where the folding is the same, but the timing is different. Or, wait, I think I've got those mixed up. Gossima sprawled on the dining room chair and bored out of his mind, let his tongue hang down to the floor. Before she could sort the differences, the door gong rang. The entire tower shook, and several stones Ninian had just repaired clattered to the floor. With a frustrated sigh, she set down the mortar wand. Gossima hopped onto Ninian's back, and she tromped down the stairs. She recalled receive deliveries from the chore list with curiosity. At the front door, Ninian met a gangly teenager with shaggy brown hair that covered half of his face. His clothes were ill-fitting and torn, and he wore a lumpy gray hat that made his head look like a mushroom. Ninian guessed he was about her age, 17 or 18. He was stacking a pile of crates next to the door from a floating, scraped grav cart and tapping a cracked data pad. Ninian was so excited to see another human who wasn't her decrepit mentor that she practically exploded. Hi, she shouted. You must be the delivery boy. Hi, I'm Ninian. I'm the new apprentice. She stuck out her hand. My friends call me Neens. Not that we're friends yet, but maybe we could be. Who knows? We'll just have to see. The delivery boy stepped back and clutched his data pad to his chest, leaving Ninian's hand hanging in the air. Right. So sorry. How rude of me. Uh, What's your name? Where are you from? Ninian drew her hand back, but realized awkwardly she had no place to put it. The delivery boy's eyes darted from Ninian to the grav cart and back, like he was trying to decide if he should stay or make a run for it. Benno? he squeaked. Benno? That's your name? Benno? Benno nodded. So nice to meet you, Benno. I'm Ninian, like I said, or Neens, either works, or you can call me whatever you want. I'll probably respond. Ninian laughed, but it turned to a cackle. She could see the effect she was having on this poor delivery boy, but she couldn't stop herself. She felt like a burst dam drowning everyone downstream. So, delivery, 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 let's get these crates checked in. One crate was labeled branched pyrocrystal, and another pickled wormwood root. There were other crates with bundles of dark leaves she couldn't identify. As she stacked them in the entryway, Gossima hopped over to Benno and licked his pant leg. Benno looked cautious. That's Gossima, said Ninian. Gossy for short. He's friendly. Benno bent down to scratch Gossima behind the neck, and the frog dog roiled with pleasure. The delivery boy smiled to himself. So, Benno, Ninian said in her best attempt to project cool aloofness as she leaned on the doorframe at a jaunty angle. Would you like a cup of tea? I'd love to hear more about deliveries. Ninian was desperate for a conversation with another human that wasn't about portals or limp clock towers. Oh, well, Benno looked visibly uncomfortable. I need to, uh, you know, get back. Right, busy, of course. You're working. I mean, I'm working too. (laughs) Totally fair. No problem. It was at this point that Ninian noticed a small earthenware bowl affixed to the wall just inside the doorway, full of misshapen brass discs. She assumed this was the local currency and grabbed a handful. The bowl immediately replenished itself, with new discs bubbling up from some charm at the bottom of the bowl. So, what does Saligrix usually tip you? Ninian asked, counting out discs in her palm. Oh, he doesn't, said Benno. I've never seen him, or anyone. I'd just leave the crates by the door, ring the gong, and go. 
Saligrix sends money to my uncle directly. Hardly seems fair after coming all this way. I have made that trek. It is not easy. Benno shrugged. It's not so bad. Kind of nice, actually. She offered him a handful of discs. Does this look good? The delivery boy's eyes widened as Ninian poured the discs into his cupped hands. There you go. Benno pocketed the tip and smiled widely. Thank you, uh, Neens, he said, suddenly more interested in remembering her name. Don't mention it. I'll be here for most of the next year. Maybe you can stay for a chat next time. Or not. This was good, too. Benno hopped on the grav cart and rode it out to the trailhead. He looked back a few times, bewildered. As soon as he was out of sight, Ninian collapsed from shame. Nice job, Neens. You scared off your first chance at a friend. As she leaned back against the crate of pickled wormwood, its pungent, savory odor seeping through, she realized she needed a connection outside of the tower if she was going to make it through this apprenticeship. She needed her data stream device back. Ninian stood at the doorway to the dining room, arms crossed, waiting for Saligrix to arrive. She had made it very clear after today's lecture that he was to return her device tonight. When she saw him appear around the corner, she asked, Do you have my device? Ah, this blasted memory. Saligrix shook his head. After dinner. No, said Ninian. Go get it. Now. Saligrix pouted like a child asked to put away his favorite toy. But it is almost time to eat. Listen, it's not a unique object. If you want one for yourself, I'm sure we can order you one. I don't think money is a problem for you with that refilling dish of coins down in the entryway. But the one you have right now belongs to me, and I need it back. Saligrix's eyebrows waggled with interest like two dancing caterpillars. Order one for myself, you say? Sure, you can order anything from the data stream. I can show you how, but I need my device to do it. Saligrix made a satisfied grunt and turned to go up the stairs. He returned a few minutes later with Ninian's device in hand. She moved her chair over to his side of the table and while he chewed on a roasted pit pig leg that smelled like rubber, Ninian scrolled through the projected images of various models of data stream devices. That one, he said, pointing a greasy finger. Ninian's eyebrows raised as she set her plate on the floor for Gossima, who gave her a disappointed look of disgust. That one is very expensive, she said, and she swiped on the device to display the price to Saligrix. The old wizard snorted. Money, is it? He hobbled over to the wall niche and tapped the bordering stones in a specific pattern. A burst of golden smoke cleared with a sound like a tinkling wind chime, and several treasure chests appeared, each overflowing with gold coins and jewels. Would this cover it? Ninian nodded while her mouth struggled to form words. Uh, yes, that should cover it, yes. They placed the order that night. After dinner... Ninian stayed up later than usual. She lay face down on her bed, Gossima asleep beside her, scrolling through her device. The call of a distant bird drifted in through her open window. When she had checked the date, it told her she had gone six weeks without her device. Six weeks? Can it really have been that long? It felt like a shock. As such, she had accumulated a large backlog of messages. She had entirely missed an assignment from her advisor, where she was supposed to write a report on the progress of her apprenticeship so far. All the more reason to get Saligrix a device of his own, Ninian thought. She shot off an apologetic message explaining the situation and asked for an extension. There were a few messages from Drusilla who had checked in periodically. After seeing Drusilla almost every day last year, it felt like she hadn't spoken with her friend for an eternity. Ninian wanted to have a live chat, but the device told her that, based on the time on Drusilla's world, she was likely asleep, but their schedules would line up the next day. She sent her a message to schedule a call. There were also several messages from home. She replied, reassuring her mother that she was still alive. She wanted to call home too, but it was going to take longer for waking hours to line up with her home world of Swerk. Now that all of those things were out of the way, it was time to do some sleuthing. There was something that had been tugging at the back of her mind— it was the way that Benno had seemed so afraid this morning, how all the people in Black Gulch seemed wary of her when she mentioned she was going to be the new apprentice to their master wizard. She connected to the Belcaran archives and typed in, Saligrix, 